Welcome back to St. Paul's where the cathedral is now filling up and we are within half an hour of this national service of Thanksgiving. The Prime Minister has just arrived and uh, we've just seen the uh, Duke of Kent and the uh, Duke of Gloucester and some more royal guests arriving now. Robert Hardman is still with me. This is uh, Prince and Princess Michael of Kent um, being shown in by uh, and the Duke of Kent ahead of them, um, followed by uh, other, other members of the family. Um, about to take uh, their place near the front in the, uh, um, in, in, the main, in the main seats. We've seen the sort of the cousins uh, and the, uh, the, the wider royal family uh, who've been here for some time now, um, but uh, now we're getting into uh, more familiar royal territory, if you like. They're all being greeted at the Great West Door by the Dean and Chapter of St Paul's Cathedral, the Dean, Dr David Eisen, and the Chapter. They are the, uh, the canons who, with the uh, Dean, are the governing body, if you like, of the cathedral. They're part of the welcoming party, and uh, Duke of Kent now being welcomed by the Dean and Chapter, and then by the Bishop of London, Richard Charters, and by the Archbishop of Canterbury. That's the formal process of welcome. Gloucester there. If you take a look at the other end of the cathedral where people are taking their seats because we have a big contingent now of politicians who've gathered. There's an interesting little chat going on between Jeremy Corbyn, the Labour leader, who is very proudly a dedicated Republican. Uh, he's here nonetheless, part of this uh, National Service of Thanksgiving, chatting there to Mr Speaker John Burko, uh, who of course, in days gone by, was a Conservative Member of Parliament, but they're having a very friendly chat about what's going on. Let's have a look at some of the other politicians who've gathered as well, because they represent all parts of the United Kingdom. Carwin Jones, the First Minister of Wales. Um, and then next to him, that is Peter Morell, uh, who is the husband of Nicola Sturgeon, um, who was very busy last night taking part in a pretty feisty debate on the referendum uh, on, uh, on ITV, a debate on the uh, referendum campaign. We also have Arlene Foster here, who is the First Minister of uh, Northern Ireland, just there on the left. And just behind we have Ken McIntosh, who is the newly elected presiding officer of the uh, Scottish Parliament. So he's here with, uh, in a Scottish uh, party with Nicola Sturgeon uh, and others. The it Prime is Minister is also in his place now. David Cameron, who will be giving one of the readings in this service. Samantha Cameron and there we have uh, George Osborne too. All of them of course, it goes without saying, having mentioned uh, Nicola Sturgeon's activities, all of them immersed in this uh, pretty hard-fought referendum campaign but today all thoughts away from that, all thoughts focusing very sharply on the business here which is to give thanks for the Queen's 90 years. That's right. It's not a day for dwelling on any sort of um, splits at all. It's uh, we've got we've got Remainers and Brexiters and left and right here. A very substantial um, political turnout. I mean, this this is uh, one of the most um, uh, extensive uh, uh, numbers of cabinet ministers and, and uh, representatives of all parts of all the legislatures in the country devolved uh, assemblies. To uh, here we see the Duke of Kent uh, coming down uh, the nave to take the seat, followed by his uh, his son there, the Earl of St Andrews. Um, Prince Michael of Kent, uh, a little to the rear of them, um, and uh, there, there is Prince and Princess Michael of Kent uh, with their children, um, Freddie and uh, Lady Gabriella. When did we last see um, a presence of the royal family of the, of, on this scale? Well, I think you'd have to go back to something like the royal wedding uh, to see uh, quite so many, um, quite so many members of the family. I mean the the. As well as the, those in the line of succession, there's a very uh, extensive um, selection of cousins, if you like. They've got representatives from the Bowes Lion family, the, 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 the Queen's um, uh, uh, family on her mother's side. Um, the, there are uh, many members of the Mountbatten family here. There's also a lot of members of the royal household here because, um, obviously, you know, for, for them this is this is a, a, an extremely important day too. Uh, this this because the Queen's official birthday is, to, is tomorrow, but her real birthday was back in April. They've, if you like, been living this birthday rather like Her Majesty uh, for many weeks now, and they're 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 very keen to be uh, to be here today too. Let's have a look at the latest arrivals outside the cathedral. And this gives you a real sense of Ludgate Hill, one of the three ancient hills in the city of London, Ludgate Hill and Tower Hill and Cornhill. 
and there's been a cathedral on this spot, a place of worship on this spot, Christian worship, for 1,400 years. It's worth remembering that because uh, we attend these services and we report what's going on, but it's always good at some point to look at this magnificent building, the masterpiece of Sir Christopher and remember that it's been a place of worship here for 1,400 years. We'll have more um, arrivals in just a moment. Back to uh, back to Sonali. Thank you very much, Hugh. Now, during the service, we'll be hearing three musical gifts being played to celebrate the Queen's birthday, and one of them will be performed by concert pianist Martin here. Tell us more about it, Martin. The piece I'm going to play is by Arnold Bax, who is the first Queen's master of the music. It's called Burlesque, and it's just an amalgamation of so many different musical styles. There's a waltz, and there's some also beautiful poetry at the end. Well, we look forward to hearing it and seeing you perform. And am I right in thinking yours will be the first solo performance like this at a royal service? Yes, it is the first ever performance at a royal service, which no pressure, really. <laughs> um, it's in I'm incredibly privileged to be here, though. Where does this and this occasion rate in your career? You've achieved so much, you're 19. Where do you think this rates? This is the absolute pinnacle of my career so far. I mean, I don't know what can top it really, but it's just wonderful to be at such a joyous event. And in fact, I'm not so nervous as, as usual because it's such a celebration. And you have a bit of a personal connection with the Queen as well, don't you? Yes, I do. She's in fact the patron of the college that I study at, which is the Royal College of Music. And another aspect of her life that's hugely interesting to me is her charity work, which is absolutely inspirational. Well, Martin, we look forward to your performance. The very best of luck with Thank it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sonali. Martin, you seem as cool as a cucumber. I think you're going to do a cracking job. Let's talk for a minute about family and the nature of family. We saw there, Katie, I think a roundabout 53 members of the royal family gathering at St Paul's today yeah. for this service of Thanksgiving. That's pretty unusual. That's a lot of family life and making people feel as if they're bonded and they're together. We have increasingly seen connections, you know, publicly with uh, the Queen and her grandchildren. I'm thinking especially of recently with Harry. We came up to the Invictus Games and I don't know if all the viewers at home saw this, so I, I'd like to show it to them. This is, this is in the lead up as the publicity was sort of driving towards the Invictus Games, which Harry was behind. There was a rather surprising little vignette Very between, surprising. between uh, <laughs> the Queen and Harry. Let's take a look. Do you like to watch it together? Yeah. Let's have a look. Hey, Prince Harry. Boom. Oh, really? Please. Boom. <laughs> really? Please. I mean, that's a laugh out loud moment. You can play it so many uh, times, it's still laugh out loud. That's what's so fascinating about this story. The reason we are gripped by this, it's both a combination of a domestic story. These are a family and also its heritage. The combination is irresistible. We'll now, I think, go back to Hugh at St Paul's. Hugh. Duke of York and his daughters Beatrice and Eugenie arriving at St Paul's Cathedral. Duke's main focus over the past year has been uh, his uh, pitch at the palace, that's something he founded to support entrepreneurs. He is of course the UK special representative for international trade and uh, Princess Beatrice and uh, Princess Eugenie with him too and there we have the Earl and Countess of Wessex. Yes, it's very nice, Hugh, that we see there. Um, ready for the first time, uh, the uh, uh, Earl and Countess's uh, son, the uh, Viscount Seven, um, you know, playing a, a, a prominent, uh, starring role, perhaps, at a, at a state occasion. Um, we've occasionally seen the children on the balcony at the birthday parade, but uh, here he is uh, coming to his first big formal event, um, and there's uh, Lady Louise uh, Mountbatten Windsor there, too, who, who played a very uh, uh, rather poignant role at the uh, equestrian. A birthday tribute to the Queen at Windsor recently. She came on at the end riding a pony herself um, in front of the uh, the crowd alongside her father, the Earl of Wessex. Uh, the Queen uh, loved that and she'll be very pleased um, that they're here today. Duke of York being greeted by the uh, the Dean and Chapter and now the, the Archbishop of Canterbury exchanging a few words. And uh, the Princesses likewise, and now the Earl of Wessex. Dr. David uh, Eisen there, who's been uh, the Dean of St. Paul since 2012. It's a big year for the Earl as well, because he now uh, is in charge of the Duke of Edinburgh's award scheme. He's taken on the mantle from his father, uh, looking after that. And it's their 60th anniversary, so a lot of big events uh, in relation to that, coming up all around the world. Um, and uh, that, of course, is a great tribute to the, uh, the reluctant birthday boy today, the Duke of Edinburgh.
the bells of uh, St Paul's Cathedral. Very hard work for the Guild of Ringers at uh, the Cathedral here today and indeed over this weekend and uh, tomorrow on uh, the day of the official birthday uh, they'll be attempting a full peel which could take them four hours and we wish them all the luck in the world with it. There's the Princess Royal and her husband uh, Vice Admiral uh, Sir Timothy Lawrence. And uh, there also is the, the Queen's cousin Princess Alexandra as well. Uh, as we've said more than 50 members of the royal family here today. Uh, Princess Alexandra's uh, son is already here, James Ogilvy, um, and, uh, and his wife. Uh, it, it, it really does have the, the feel of a, of, a, of a family wedding in a way, um, uh, although uh, you know, there, there too we've got, as we've seen, uh, a very large number of politicians. Uh, the diplomatic corps are here, we've got the Governors General of all the Queen's realms. I mean, we often forget that she's Queen not just of this country, but of 15 others, and every single one of those is represented here today. Uh, uh, the diplomatic corps, as I've said, and, and the Lord Lieutenants, these, these, these people who, who work day in, day out uh, in, in counties up and down the land, um, representing the Queen at a very local level, um, who'll probably be organising events this weekend on their own patch to mark her birthday, but they're all here today too. When we think of the service itself, Robert, the, there's been a great care, a lot of care taken, obviously, to think about every single element and segment of this service. What would you point people to as we look forward to the service now in about 15 or so minutes time? Um, what are the elements that you think will really underline what this is about? I think uh, 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 a lot will depend on uh, what the Archbishop of Canterbury has to say and the, that's always a, an important one. We've got the Archbishop of York here today as well. Um, there is new music has been composed by the new Master of the Queen's Music, Judith Weir. I think that, that'll be important. I think for a lot of people what they're going to also be very much looking forward to is seeing, seeing uh, Sir David Attenborough here who of course um, is, is the same age as the Queen and, and reading out that tribute written by uh, Michael Bond, creator of Paddington Bear. Paddington Bear, the only other person who has uh, two birthdays uh, like Her Majesty. And there's David Attenborough with Michael Bond waiting uh, to take part in this service and uh, I think you're right, lots of people will uh, consider that to be uh, one of the great highlights. He's He's been very much a part of, of royal life, Sir David. I mean, he, he was actually, he was uh, uh, used to many years ago in, in his capacity as a senior figure at the BBC he used to produce the Queen's uh, Christmas broadcast um, and uh, is, is a, a, a great friend of the Duke of Edinburgh as well because of their shared interest in wildlife and conservation and uh, the Earl of Wessex now and the Countess of Wessex and their two children uh, are taking their seats so we, we're, uh, we, we're, we're, we're full up really up to the front row now. There's no setting like it really, St Paul's Cathedral and uh, the view there from the Great Dome uh, is, it really just expresses the scale and the ambition of Wren and the fact that it's still here today of course is a miracle. It has seen some of the great moments in our, in our national life, um, royal weddings, um, recently of course there was the, the state funeral for Baroness Thatcher was here as well. Um, it, there's this Westminster Abbey. The, the, they are the, the, the places that have that, that really seen the, the, the great moments in, the, in, in our in our modern royal story. Um, here too today, by the way, it's worth pointing out there are um, uh, many senior members of the of the, of the household who've uh, who've served the Queen um, for um, collectively well over a hundred years. I, I saw a little earlier some of her ladies in waiting um, sitting uh, there. Um, they're all here today. Um, they've uh, they've been uh, at her side. Um, right around the world, um, ready throughout this rain. Uh, it's a big day for them too. We mentioned uh, the music earlier and of course we were talking about the young musician who was uh, explaining to us that in a sense he wasn't quite as nervous as he thought he'd be. Um, <laughs> I have to say, I know he's brilliant, but he must be a little bit nervous. How, how could you not be? I think everyone, there is a sense here, everyone's sort of, everyone just wants to do their best. I, this is a, uh, they're all here because they shared love and respect for the Queen and, and you really just want, you want this to be absolutely perfect. And, and uh, even being here yesterday while some of the rehearsing was going on, that, I mean, that was uplifting in itself. So I think we're in for a real treat here. Well, the standard of the music, as always in these services, um, is just world-class. We've had the band of the Royal Air Force Regiment 
uh, conducted by Wing Commander Duncan Stubbs. They've been taking part. We'll hear more from them. Uh, the uh, fanfarers, the uh, trumpeters of the uh, House of Cavalry, uh, the state trumpeters, uh, and also from the uh, Royal Marines. Uh, they'll be taking part in the service. And, of course, I mentioned that Simon Johnson, the organist and assistant director, will be uh, playing the organ for the service itself. So we're looking forward to that. And two choirs, the choir of St. Paul's Cathedral and from the uh, uh, Her Majesty's uh, Chapel Royal. So I think the quality of the music is guaranteed. Michael Fallon, the Defence Secretary, um, just on the right-hand side there, and then uh, Philip Hammond, the Foreign Secretary, in the in the front row for the politicians, along with the Chancellor um, and the Prime Minister. Chris Grayling, uh, the Leader of the House, uh, sitting just behind them. And uh, sitting just behind the Labour leader there, we have uh, Sadiq Khan, the Mayor of London. This his first major service at... Uh, St. Paul's Cathedral as the uh, newly elected Mayor of London and he's had a very uh, he's had a very energetic and probably rather tiring time in the last few weeks uh, Robert Yes, well, the strange starting to show there a little bit then, but uh, he's uh, yes, he, he will have a uh, during his time as mayor, he'll he'll get used to um, taking part in a lot of these events. I mean, with with the that office uh, comes uh, comes attendance at all these great occasions. So John Major, he's a man who's seen many uh, of these these great uh, royal events himself, with uh, Dame Norma there, and just behind them, of course, Tony Blair and Cherie Blair. York and uh, and his daughters, Princess Beatrice, Princess Eugenie, uh, who uh, who've been, played a very prominent part in uh, all these these uh, family occasions, and they're the Earl and Countess of Wessex, with Lady Louise and Lord Seven. They're all studying the, the programmes here. I should say that um, what we've done is we've made the programme available online. So if uh, people if people do want to have a look at uh, the content of the programme, it's interesting. If you want to follow the service itself. Well, then uh, we'll put the address up on screen for you. And uh, it's uh, bbc.co.uk forward slash queen at 90. And then you'll see there's a link there to download the the order of service itself, if, uh, if that's of some use to people as they follow the, the words of the hymns, for example. Still a few members of the royal family yet to come. Um, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge, Prince Harry, and, uh, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. They're still on their way. So this should be the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge and Prince Harry in the first car, we think. And they'll be greeted by the Lord Mayor of London, who is Geoffrey Evans, Lord Mount Evans, the leader of the City of London Corporation, always present at these uh, events, because, of course, he is the authority in the City of London and he greets guests to St Paul's, which is within the city precincts. There he is, the 688th Mayor of London, Lord Mayor of London. Big cheer there for Prince Harry and the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge arriving together. Um, we'll see them, of course, uh, tomorrow on the balcony at Buckingham Palace. Uh, the Duke of Cambridge himself will be taking part on horseback as Colonel of the Irish Guards. Mm -hmm. Prince Harry will, uh, no doubt, um, escort the Duchess in a, in a carriage to the proceedings there and have a wave at the crowd. Um, Duke and Duchess who are celebrating their fifth wedding anniversary this year. We have the yeoman of the guard and we have the gentleman at arms. So the yeoman here very smartly uh, lined up in their medieval uh, uniforms. Always a bit of rivalry between them, the uh, yeoman. Uh, friendly. Point out that friendly very rivalry. friendly. The yeoman always point out they're the oldest guard. That's uh, right. And the uh, gentleman, I'm just point the gentleman, always point out the, uh, they're the closest guard. And they're uh, the, they, the closest guard and the senior guard, they also say, we are, of course, gentlemen and the others are yeoman, and that's meant to be <laughs> self-explanatory. <laughs> Dr. David Eisen, the dean, presenting uh, the duke to members of the chapter, and, of course, he knows the Bishop of London very well and the Archbishop of Canterbury. The latest arrivals along Ludgate Hill, the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall. To loud cheers. 
big crowd here, big international crowd. You can see some of the other flags there. There's a Canadian flag over there. Um, it, it's it, events like this. They, they're, they're not you know, hugely publicised in advance, but because frankly, I, it, it, it just isn't the, the, the room for the, the volume of people that would, would attract. But it, it's still very, very popular. Very big crowd here today, and there'll be an even bigger one tomorrow, no doubt, on the Mall and the touch of Cornwall. Uh, out of the state car with the Prince of Wales. So they'll be greeted by the Lord Mayor of London too, Lord Mount Evans. And I think it's worth noting that we mentioned earlier, Robert, the Duke of Edinburgh scheme and uh, all that that's achieved. This year, of course, the Prince of Wales celebrating 40 years of the Prince's Trust, which has helped hundreds of thousands of young yeah, people that, too. exactly. I mean, that's an extraordinary uh, organisation created with the contents of his Royal Navy pension when he left the Royal Navy in 1976. It's now the biggest charitable network in the country, so he's got a lot to celebrate this year as well. With the Duchess, and they uh, appeared together once again this year at the state opening of Parliament, which was a, which is a relatively recent development for them as a couple. Yes, uh, we're seeing uh, very gradually more and more of the... Uh, the uh, heavy lifting, if you like, in monarchy, uh, gradually being shared around, and, and the, the, the Prince and the Duchess uh, certainly taking on now a lot of the long-haul travel that, uh, that the Queen might once have done herself. Um, it's very much a, 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 a team effort, the way that the, the, the monarchy is run these days, with, uh, with three generations all going strong at the same time. Just get a glimpse there at the Great West Door of the state trumpeters of the Household Cavalry. They've moved in, into position top of the steps uh, they look splendid don't they um, they're waiting for Her Majesty's arrival they will sound the fanfare um, uh, when the Queen arrives here just outside St Paul's um, and the fanfare will be sounded uh, on the instruction of trumpet major Philip Bishop and once inside the fanfare trumpeters of the Royal Marines Portsmouth led by Captain Ian Davis will sound a second fanfare that's right all the arms of the armed forces uh, are playing their part musically And the smiles and the jokes telling us that everyone's in the spirit for this service. Everyone, yes, it's 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 there's, there is a, a, a it is a state occasion, yes, but it's it's a personal, it's a it's a family occasion too. It, it, you know, were this marking some big anniversary, some uh, obviously there was a, a major service here uh, just at this time last year to mark the uh, 200th of Waterloo uh, that, that had a very different tone I mean it had a similar sort of le level of uh, VIP guests but uh, yeah, here today you see these little you see the uh, Duke of Cambridge there turning around waving at uh, some of his cousins he hasn't seen for a while it does have this sort of family wedding feel as well as, uh, as being a, a, a national event too Prince Harry having a chat with the Earl of Wessex possibly talking about his Invictus Games, which he's recently returned. Yes, he's been busy with that, and of course, quite a few of the members of the Royal Family, and I'm including the Prince of Wales, they'll be attending the, uh, uh, the commemorations of the centenary of the Somme uh, in a few weeks' time. Yes, it's a, uh, again, that's a, an event where all the, all the Royal Family are, are, are heading off in different directions. You're going to have the Queen um, at a vigil at Westminster Abbey, you're going to have the Prince of Wales and, and, and both Prince William, Prince Harry and the Duchess of Cambridge out on the battlefield of the Somme themselves. There'll be very powerful scenes at that extraordinary memorial at Teepval, both at night and, and by day there. The Princess Royal herself, she's going to be helping commemorations in Canada. So, uh, as ever, uh, there, are, there are major historic landmarks um, to be commemorated and the, the Royal Family will be at the forefront of those commemorations. So it's coming up to uh, three minutes to 11 and uh, very soon we will have the signal to say that uh, Her Majesty and the Duke are very close to arriving at the cathedral here at St. St. Paul's. Let's take a look down Ludgate Hill and see if there's any sign because the crowds are there and the flags are fluttering in the breeze. And, uh, all eyes trained along Ludgate Hill down towards Fleet Street that's the direction we're looking at and Ludgate by the way one of the ancient gates of the city of London the gate was dismantled I think in 1780 but uh, that is the area here lots of very powerful resonant reminders of the ancient history of this part of London 
and there we're following the Queen's progress from the helicopter. Snaking their way through, left and right, and uh, in a you sense. sometimes assume that the traffic's been cleared, but clearly not in London. Well, you do get a sense, that I think that's a very neat illustration just of the, the style of the monarchy, if you like. I mean, in some countries, a, a fairly minor official will probably demand a motorcade of 10 cars and lots of flashing outriders. Here we have our head of state. Uh, coming to a major event uh, with all the senior figures in the land, and, uh, and you know it's a, it's a it's a small motorcade uh, just being uh, helped through the traffic, but uh, clearly the message will have gone out as it always does. Uh, no great fuss, please. Just try and make sure I'm there on time. And they're still south of the river, I think, Robert. I think that was Waterloo Station, so they'll be crossing Waterloo Bridge very soon, and it'll just take a couple of minutes probably to arrive. Yes, we see there uh, outside St Paul's, uh, there is a, uh, a, a handrail now, has been uh, erected on the steps there, um, uh, just mindful of the fact that, uh, you know, Her Majesty now is uh, our longest lived monarch. Let's have a look outside because I'd like to have another look at a very important part of this ceremony, when we look at the Lord Mayor and then we have the Pearl Sword. The Pearl Sword will take an important part in this ceremony because it is a symbol the sword bearers there to the left of the Lord Mayor the pearl sword a symbol an ancient symbol 16th century of the authority of the Lord Mayor and uh, he will present the sword to the Queen who will simply touch it now this is I suppose a recognition of uh, the monarch's supreme power even in the city of London where the Lord Mayor is normally the boss this ceremony normally takes place at the boundary at Temple Bar which is the other end of uh, Fleet Street but uh, these days, there's no reason to stop there. The Queen comes for convenience to St. Paul's and the, the Pearl Sword Ceremony takes place on the steps. And a word, too, about the step liners. They're, they're, they look so smart here and they represent, well, all branches of the armed forces um, from the Royal Navy, HMS Lancaster and Ocean and Queen Elizabeth, from the, um, the Coldstream Guards, Scots Guards, Irish Guards, Welsh Guards. Uh, we have the Royal Regiment of Scotland, the Duke of Lancaster's Regiment, um, many more. And then we have the Royal Air Force too, uh, from Cranwell, Marham, uh, the Royal Air Force Regiment, the Royal Auxiliary Air Force, um, and the uh, Royal Auxiliary Air Force uh, in Edinburgh. I'm just going to mention one of the uh, people who's uh, taking part, because it's worth mentioning, uh, Warrant Officer Norman Davenport, who's 61 from Edinburgh. Why am I picking Norman out? Well, he is... One of the few still serving who holds the Queen's Silver Jubilee Medal, the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal, and the Queen's Diamond Jubilee Medal. That is Warrant Officer Norman Davenport, he's 61, um, and he's the Squadron Warrant Officer, 603 City of Edinburgh Squadron, Royal Auxiliary Air Force. He's in there, okay? He's on the steps, and he's part of the, uh, the, the step lining party, and... Uh, what an honour to be chosen for this today, Robert, of all days. Yes, I mean, when you, when you have the, the Queen as your, your, whether she's your Colonel or your Commodore or your Admiral, uh, whichever unit you represent, uh, it is a huge honour to be asked to come and take part here. And uh, They're not just standing outside, um, they all have seats inside being reserved for them, and once Her Majesty's in, um, they'll be taking part in the service as well. And uh, it is a reflection, really, of the, the, the span, if you like, of the, 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 the Queen's um, range of close personal connections. Each one of those people out there, um, which we will see in a minute on the steps, each one of them uh, do, uh, they represent uh, an organisation she knows all about, as, as we do with these uh, with the state trumpeters here. And even inside the cathedral, the bells can be heard very, very clearly. And uh, they're dominating everything. Um, and uh, I, I'll say a word as we as we see it. They're all enjoying, and uh, you know Prince Harry they're enjoying a joke with the Earl of Wessex. But I will say a word about the St Paul's Cathedral Guild of Ringers because they, there are um, 33 members. Um, they range from 21 to 83 years of age, and uh, they are uh, in 2015 they rank for almost 180 services, not just high-profile services like this one, state events but all kinds of other services too. So spare a thought for the Guild of Ringers. They're hard at work today. There is the Countess of Wessex, possibly explaining to uh, her son, Lord Seven, just saying this is, this is, how, this is how these events 
they said this is what they're going to be like. You're going to see many more of these over the years. And uh, just behind them there, we, we see uh, some of the uh, members of the Duke of Kent's family as well. This is Zara Phillips and Mike Tyndall. Alongside uh, Peter Phillips and his wife. And again, more members of the Kent family behind. The Princess Royal and uh, her husband here too, and uh, of course Princess Anne has attended many services here over the years. She she certainly has, and she's uh, she's very uh, very much uh, as we saw in some of those uh, birthday photographs of the Queen. Uh, there was that delightful photograph of the Queen and and the Princess Royal um, side by side. Uh, I think people sometimes forget how how, how, how close she is to, to 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 the Queen so much of the time, and and uh, and. Uh, Events like this, it's very nice to see the way they do bring out the, the extended family. Um, all of them uh, very much thrilled to be part of a day like today. We it's mentioned Peter Phillips earlier, didn't we, Robert? Because, um, gosh, there's been a lot of work put into Sunday, which is the patron's lunch on the Mall. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's been Peter Phillips' job. Yes, it was his idea to gather together all the 600 odd uh, charities of which the Queen is, is patron or has a, has a, a connection um, get them all to uh, as it were um, sit down and celebrate and, and as well as this uh, remarkable lunch uh, in the in the Mall um, there will be a, a parade too representing all facets of the Queen's life but again uh, there has been a, an attempt a, a, you know, very clear attempt to, to spread that sort of birthday message across the country so as well as in the mall there are going to be events all over the country in, in villages towns streets there will be street parties uh, happening uh, this weekend uh, mainly on Sunday um, to, to say exactly the same thing which is happy birthday Mal. there is one uh, gentleman here today celebrating his 97th birthday this year um, that's something for others to think about maybe because the Duke of Edinburgh today by the way celebrating his 95th birthday today but Lord Carrington there he is um, very distinguished uh, figure uh, 97 this year um, the oldest survivor living survivor of the cabinets of wait for this Sir Winston Churchill Alec Douglas Hume and uh, Harold Macmillan and if that isn't enough the second longest serving member of the Privy Council after the Duke of Edinburgh and of course let's not forget his distinguished service in the Second World War with the Grenadier Guards and the, uh, the, he is the uh, holder of the Military Cross. He's also a uh, very proud Knight of the Garter, the most senior order of chivalry um, and uh, all the Knights of the Garter will be meeting on Monday at Windsor Castle uh, for their annual their annual ceremony which is uh, another big highlight in the Queen's year. Well the wait is on and I'm going to share a secret with you it is five past eleven and the Archbishop of Canterbury and the uh, Bishop of London are well they are waiting because they're aware that um, it's the Queen's right of course to turn up whenever she likes <laughs> uh, especially for a service which is uh, to do with her 90th birthday but I, I think it's fair to say uh, the secret is that we're a little late at this point Robert and maybe going via Waterloo wasn't a good idea well I've just been looking forward to see whether the Duke of Edinburgh has any words to say to the new mayor of London about his uh, traffic arrangements <laughs> Sadiq Khan certainly uh, uh, will be going back to his office and wondering uh, wondering about some of those roadworks on the route here Justin Welby doesn't look very amused at this point no, he, he, he doesn't. Uh, uh, the Bishop of London there, who, uh, um, who of course presides over every year at the Cenotaph, is, uh, is, is someone who, uh, um, well, this, this, is, this is his cathedral church, um, but even he's starting to look a little uh, concerned. Let's have a look um, outside if we can, because I'd like to see what's going on. Let's have a look down Ludgate Hill. We can keep our fingers crossed, can't we? That's a lovely view towards the city of London, but this is in the other direction. And... Uh, we're looking down, as I say, towards Fleet Street. This is this is the probable arrival route. We think if it's from Waterloo, across Waterloo Bridge and along the Strand, that would be the normal route. But who knows? There may be there be a more, a more circuitous route today. Yes, and I mean, over over history, there've been uh, uh, occasions when uh, they've, they've they've altered the route. Um, George the Fifth's um, Silver Jubilee route. I remember that that one. Well, had to be uh, diverted because of course if they came across London Bridge 
they would come this way, wouldn't they? They would come from the eastern end, from the city of London. There we have that rather odd walkie-talkie building, which is dominating the skyline behind us. Um, and then uh, along from the eastern direction, from London Bridge, down here, um, and uh, across the main approach there, past that famous Millennium Bridge, which looks across to, to, to the bank, uh, uh, the, to, to the Tate Modern and uh, bank side, and then across this way. So there are two routes to approach, and I'm wondering now whether we were looking the wrong way. Maybe yeah. Ludgate Hill was the wrong way. <laughs> So that's why we're looking at this, OK? Certainly the crowds down there are hoping that they've, uh, they've camped out in the right spot to get uh, uh, as much of a view but as it, they can. But it does at least allow us to see that um, the crowds are extending. They're not just down that bit here, look. The crowds are extending all the way back yeah, it's towards, the, uh, towards the southern entrance of the cathedral. There is a grand southern entrance, which is not used very often. We're looking here at the great west door. That is the main facade. And uh, from the sky, well... I have to say, it's always a breathtaking view of St. Paul's Cathedral. It dominates this part of the skyline, and that is despite the skyline having been changed dramatically in recent years around the city and on the south side, of course, with the big shard, which is across the, uh, across the river from here. But uh, St. Paul's still powerfully dominating the skyline of this part of London. And we're getting a glimpse of the Thames there, and uh, this weekend, in honour of the, Her Majesty's 90th birthday, while there is the parade going along, the, the traditional birthday parade. There is going to be a, uh, a flotilla of boats setting sail uh, along the river uh, at the same time, um, including um, Gloriana, which we famously saw during the uh, Jubilee Thames pageant, and, uh, and the Haven Door as well, the famous launch that carried the coffin of Churchill. So that's Ludgate Circus, that circular part, uh, the intersection there, and that is uh, that now looks a little more promising, I think, doesn't it? They turn right as they are. So maybe across Blackfriars Bridge. I think they've come Blackfriars Bridge, missed out Fleet Street, um, but here they are now. So climbing Ludgate Hill and uh, at nearly 10 past 11, the Queen preparing to celebrate her 90th birthday with a service of thanksgiving at St. Paul's Cathedral, flanked by the Duke of Edinburgh, who's celebrating his birthday at 95 today. He wants to keep that quiet, though, doesn't he? Yes, he's, he's, he's uh, uh, despite several efforts to uh, uh, try and arrange one or two things uh, uh, for him, uh, he's made it very clear uh, he doesn't want any, anything to distract from the uh, Queen's celebrations. I'm sure there will be references in the service uh, to, uh, to His Royal Highness. Uh, he is, after all, um, the longest lived consort, uh, British royal family, uh, uh, you know, the male consort the British royal family's ever had, theirs is the, uh, the longest royal marriage in history, uh, they are an extraordinary double act. There we see now, we can see the Queen, she's wearing a, a primrose yellow uh, uh, dress by uh, her dresser Angela Kelly uh, for the occasion, and uh, the state trumpeters tell us what we've all been waiting for. State trumpeters of the Household Cavalry, indeed, uh, led by Trumpet Major Philip Bishop, announcing the Queen's arrival at St Paul's Cathedral for this service of thanksgiving. The step liners, 83 of them in place, and the Lord Mayor of London, Geoffrey Evans, ready to greet Her Majesty.